Jesus already returned. But I don't mean Jesus returned in the sense that a literal five foot five Jesus came out the sky and came back. So shut the hell up and just listen for five minutes. Shut the hell up. I am a preterist. A preterist is somebody who believes the Bible has been fulfilled. You have partial preterists and full preterists. Partial preterists, well, every Christian is a partial preterist because you believe that the Bible in part has been completed because the Messiah has come into the world in the flesh. When I say Jesus already returned, what I mean is that Jesus's kingdom has finally come. In the ancient world, when a king would go somewhere, a king would bring his kingdom. So when the kingdom of the king came, the king came. When a king would bring his presence, he would bring his kingdom with him. So wherever the king went, his kingdom went. So what the disciples and what the people in the first century were waiting for, they were waiting for a messianic kingdom to come. And they were waiting for a physical kingdom. But Jesus says things like the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. If my kingdom was of this world, my followers would have fought for it. But my kingdom is not of this world. So Jesus is letting his followers and everybody know that his kingdom is not going to be a kingdom that you can see. Jesus says to Nicodemus, nobody can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And yet there's so many people who are born again and they don't understand that Jesus's kingdom is not physical. And Jesus told his audience that his kingdom was going to come in that generation. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus says, this generation shall not pass until all of these things are fulfilled. He's talking to the generation of people who are currently in front of his face. Jesus says, truly, I tell you, who is the you? in this statement. Is he talking to me? Is he talking to the person watching this video? Absolutely not, because you didn't exist. Jesus isn't looking through the corridor of time talking to a CNN news camera. He's really talking to the real disciples who are right in front of his face. When he says, truly, I tell you, these are the you. Truly, I tell you, these people some who are standing here, these people, because you were not standing there, he's talking to the audience of people in front of his face, will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So Jesus is making a promise to the people in front of his face that they will not die until they see Christ coming in his kingdom, in that generation, in their lifetime. Now, the catch is the kingdom that Jesus was talking about was a spiritual kingdom. So they wouldn't be able to physically see the kingdom. That's why in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gave them physical signs for them to look out for. So that when the physical signs happened, they would know that they were in the kingdom, not because they could physically see the kingdom, but they could see the signs leading up to the kingdom. So this is the Jewish temple. This is the temple that the disciples would have been looking at in Matthew chapter 24. What most people don't know is the Jewish temple used to be referred to as heaven and earth. A quick Wikipedia search will show ancient Jewish traditions view the Holy of Holies. This right here is the Holy of Holies of the Jewish temple. The Jewish temple was set up in the three different parts. The Holy of Holies is where the priest would go to make a sacrifice. This courtyard right here was the courtyard for where the Jews would go. Gentiles were not allowed inside of the inner court. And the outer courtyard was for the Gentiles. This is for the Gentiles, this was for the Jews, and the Holy of Holies was for the priest, high priest specifically. And inside of the Holy of Holies was where the high priest would make a sacrifice to God on Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. It was the most holiest place on earth, 
Hence, why Jews view the holiest place on earth inside of the temple as heaven on earth. Ancient Jewish traditions viewed the Holy of Holies as the spiritual junction of heaven and earth, the axis mandi. So when Jesus is talking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24, and he says, heaven and earth will pass away. This was heaven and earth to a Jew. And Jesus said that heaven and earth would pass away in the lifetime of the disciples. So the disciples would witness heaven and earth passing away. And that did happen 40 years after Jesus predicted it would happen. Jesus predicted the destruction of the temple in 33 AD. And in 70 AD, Jerusalem was surrounded by armies. This is why Jesus says, but when you, who is the you? This is not talking about anybody in America. When you, Jesus's audience, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you, the audience of people Jesus is directly speaking to, they, you, they, those people who Jesus is talking to will know that her desolation is near. In 70 AD, the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem after a long war from 65 AD until 70 AD. Remember, Jesus tells his audience there will be wars and rumors of war. There were wars in 65 to 70 AD, a war between the Jews and the Romans. As a result of this long war, the Romans finished it. The Romans surrounded Jerusalem and they burnt the Jewish temple in the city of Jerusalem down to the ground. Now, when the Roman army came, the Roman army came in clouds. Coming on clouds is an ancient idiom. Because when a rival army would come your way, you wouldn't see the army first. The first thing you would see before you saw the army was a thick cloud of dust that the armies would produce from the marching and trolloping of the horses. So the Bible talks about Jesus coming on clouds. Jesus didn't literally come on literal clouds on the sky. Jesus didn't literally come in a cumulus nimbus cloud. The clouds that the Bible is talking about are clouds of an army from dust. And when Jerusalem saw the Roman army, they knew that this was because of Jesus's doing. When Jerusalem saw that the army of Romans were coming in clouds of dust, they were able to connect the dots and realize that the reason for their destruction was because they killed their Messiah. And when the physical temple fell to the ground, the true temple that Jesus was trying to get the Jews prepared for came down from heaven spiritually and tabernacled inside of men. The last days was about a transition from the physical tabernacle to a spiritual tabernacle where God went from dwelling in a building to dwelling inside of his people. And when Christ's kingdom came, that is when Christ came. Because wherever a king's presence is at, that is where the king is. Christ's presence transitioned from being inside of the temple to being inside of all men who believe. So because the temple was destroyed, now we have the right to be called temples. It was the last days of the old covenant. It was the last days of the old temple. It was the last days of the old covenant system. I talk about this stuff in way more detail in my books. If you do not have my books, and if you want to learn more about what your Bible actually means, get my books by going to the link in my bio and share this video around with everybody. Christ already came back, but it's not like anything we've talked about. It's better. Give me a follow, share this video around. The issue a lot of you guys are going to have is this video makes hell of a lot of sense, but it's going to go against what you've been taught your entire lives. Choose reason over fear.